Hey everyone, it's Erin. Thank you so much for popping onto my channel to watch my very first budget with me video. So you're going to have to bear with me because I have a lot of thoughts on this particular budgeting planner and how I am going to do things weekly from here on out. So just as a little caveat, I do have another channel. And so if you have reached me by visiting the green notebook, my original channel, thank you so much for popping over here. I'm really excited to get into these videos. I'm also going to be doing some everyday planning, some Fobonichi art journaling, things like that. So if this is the kind of content that you like, I hope that you stick around and subscribe. So in today's video, like I said, I'm going to be going over this particular budget planner ever so briefly. I am not going to bore you with this because maybe a lot of you have already seen this already. Um, but I'm also going to show you my week one, which was January 4th, our first paycheck um, date out of 2019. So this is going to be a true to life actual household budget. You're going to be seeing real figures, real numbers. Uh, I really think that that's the only way to make these uh, videos interesting is to actually be honest about it and also that's the only way to maybe help somebody who's looking to tweak their own budget start their own budget maybe looking for a different system so that being said our system is just a little bit different than maybe perhaps the average person and the reason for that is because my husband and I both work full-time I'm gonna give you a little bit of background we both work full-time and um, so that means that we both do at least 40 hours a week at our job. Once in a while, my husband does do some overtime. We are both hourly employees, which really technically equates to more of a salaried income. So our hours are very regular. Um, we both went to college. We both have bachelor's degrees. I am the only one who still has a freaking student loan. Boo. But, um, you know, that's life and that's just how it goes. So um, you're going to be seeing a lot of details about that as well. But... Um, I just wanted to get started and show you what's going on and so you have a little bit of an idea of what our background is before we dive in. That way things make more sense. So this is the Recollections Planner from Michaels. It has something on it. Um, and I really thought I was going to love this. And I do. I love the principle of it. I, I really wish that it worked out better for me, but I'm pretty much resigned to the fact that I'm going to have to transfer the way we do our budget into a regular notebook system. It just doesn't, uh, this um, layout doesn't afford me the room that I need um, to list everything that I want to capture every single week. So um, I think that that's probably going to be what happens. So as I was saying, we both work full time. Um, my husband gets paid weekly. He gets paid every single Friday. I get paid every other Friday. So there's a couple months during the year. So those of you who get paid every week or those of you who get paid every every other week as opposed to twice a month, you guys know that there's like that bonus pay a couple times a year. So um, in some months you'll have five Fridays and you know, you'll have just that little bit extra. So I'm going to actually show you our income every single month. So you have an idea of you know, what our actual numbers look like. And that way you understand better how we're spending our money. So as you can see, the very first part of this has this little zipper pouch, which is nice. That's great. Um, I probably won't keep anything in it because I don't really like to fill up the front or the back of notebooks like this because then I find it, I don't know, it's kind of awkward to write on if it gets too full. Um, but maybe a couple stickers, who knows? Uh, but again, I really don't think I'm going to stay with this, but I tried it and that's all I can do. So this is our yearly finance tracker page. And honestly, I may or may not um, fill this in. If I start a new notebook system for my budget, I will be capturing this information because this includes your total income, your total expenses, and then the remaining balance. That's pretty much how I do my budget every single week because I need to know to the penny how much we have that's going out in bills, and I need to know to the penny how much we have that's extra that I can spend on everyday life. So. I will be using something like that. Um, here, this is your yearly savings goal. And right now, I am on a debt payoff um, system. Um, we are, not 
just me, um, but we are on a debt payoff system and debt payoff mode. So we're really not putting anything extra into savings at this moment, except what we already contribute to 401k. So, and I'll explain that to you as well. So here, this is a bill payment tracker. This could not even touch what we typically have going on. So I won't be using that. Great ways to save today. That's awesome. That's going to be my goal for 2020. Um, but you know, this year we have to concentrate on paying down some of our debt. And I'll explain to you what our debt um, is made up of so you understand where that money went. So here, um, this is January. They give you these little tabs. So I will zoom in just a bit so you can see. I put the little stickers on here. This is an undated planner. So um, that being said, it gives you the little monthly tabs and things like that, which I ended up putting on here, which is nice. Otherwise, I just would have handwritten it. So this is my month of January. Again, they give you these little stickers. I mean, I think that they should have offered one that's already predated, but I guess some people may be jumping into this maybe halfway through the year or something like that. So um, they do give you the monthly stickers and things like that. At first I didn't even look at the sticker, so I was gonna write it out and then I was like, oh, okay, that makes life easier. <laughs> so here, these are some stickers that I bought on Etsy a while back. Um, the little dollar signs came with the kits or with the notebook. Um, but these little money bags, <laughs> they're so cute, but they're so strange because some of them are printed backward. So I won't be buying these again because for whatever reason, I mean, that actually bothers me. You're looking at February right now. As you can see here, the dollar sign is actually printed backward. This one looks okay. This one is not right. But anyway, that's the kind of little stuff that bothers me. So you'll understand as you watch my videos, I'm like super detailed and little stuff like that will like give me a short sense of anxiety. It's so weird. But anyway, so here is our paycheck system for the month of January. On the 4th, we both get paid. So I'm calling that joint payday. And then here I ended up, I don't know what I put here, but I covered it with a little post-it and called it single payday. That is only when my husband gets paid. So I get paid, as I said, every other week. He gets paid every single Friday, which is really nice. And that gives us a little extra on months that there is that fifth Friday. So um, there's only two months out of the year where there's the fifth Friday where it falls on both of us getting paid. So I only get that bonus twice a year. He gets it a, a few more times than I do. So here's our joint payday, which just passed January 4th. The 11th, um, only he will get paid. And then the 18th, again, is both of us. And then on the 25th, just him. So the way we do our budget is we have a long list of bills. I'm going to get into this because I'm going to show you what everything looks like for the fourth. We have a long list of bills every month. So what I do is I take those bills and their due dates and I actually plug them in to how we get paid. So everything that's due before January 4th, I will pay on this payday. Everything that's due between the 5th and the 11th, I will pay on this paycheck. Now, sometimes I don't have enough on this paycheck to cover everything that's due between the 5th, the 6th, the 7th, the 8th, the 9th, the 10th, and the 11th. So what I will do is I will save a little bit of money out of this paycheck and pay some bills that are due the following week. That's the only way that I can truly make this work because our bills, unfortunately, come on due dates that aren't always convenient for us. So... The way I do it is I take a block at a time, I take one week at a time, and I try to plug them in as best I can. Let me give you an example. So our mortgage is due on uh, the first of every year. So we pay that, you know, on, on the first, if the first is a Friday. If the first isn't a Friday, take for instance, January 4th. I haven't gotten paid since, this doesn't go back to December, since the last week of December. So I actually had to pay our mortgage on the last week of December because it was due on the 1st and I had no money coming in this entire week until the following Friday. So you'll see that this payday does not include our mortgage and I will do a whole video on 
every single thing that is due every month for us. And you'll, it'll start to make more sense on how we plug it into each week. But since our mortgage was due before January 4th, since our first payday out of the month, I had to pay this the prior month. So again, with this, if we have something that exceeds how much we're bringing in this week, and perhaps it's due, you know, somewhere in here, I will actually pay more here so I have enough money here. So it's kind of like borrowing Peter to pay Paul, but it's all our money. And it's just, it's just kind of how you have to juggle when you get paid the way we do. So here I'm going to zoom in and show you some figures. So paycheck number one, which is my paycheck that's bi-weekly, was $1,438. I actually round down just so, you know, I don't have to put change here. Paycheck number two, which is the weekly one, is $850. Now, he actually gets paid a bit more than that, but we put between two and $300 a month in, or I'm sorry, a pay in his 401k automatically. So depending on how many hours he works, it equates to, you know, between two and $300 a pay. That's a lot of money, but that's our retirement. I do not put anything extra into my retirement pension. He does. So that's okay by me. Um, and it's actually money that we can tap into if we have to, the way it's set up with his company. Um, but that's what we do. So he ends up bringing home eight fifty dollars per week. I bring home fourteen thirty eight every two weeks. Now he could bring home more if we decided not to contribute as much to his four hundred one k, but that's our choice. So this is what we end up with. So a total for January fourth is twenty two eighty eight. So out of that, we're going to show you the bills that we have due. Now typically, you would you would know, but I haven't been doing these videos long enough that our we have quite a few bills that are due on the first, but I took care of those in December. This will all make sense by the time I get through an entire month. So by the time I get through January and into February, this will all make sense to you and you'll see an entire snapshot of the whole picture. So this time on our due dates, we had gas due, we had trash that we pay every three months, we had our home improvement loan, and our credit card. So right here, these are two major, major debts that we have to pay down. Um, this is what I budgeted for each one of these. This is what I typically, how I typically budget for each one. And here's the actual. So I was able to do this because it's past January 4th, so I've actually paid these bills. So gas, I budgeted 200, it was 101. We've had some unseasonably warm weather. For trash, I budgeted 58. It's always the same. It was 50, I think it's something like 57.95. So I was right on target there. Our home improvement loan has a variable interest rate, which is scary. Um, it could be dangerous, but um, it's pretty conservative. And we did some research on what the high highest interest rate was in the past something like seven years. And we are comfortable with it. So um, I budgeted 200. It was actually closer to 250. So I just wanted to put over here what the difference was in what I budgeted and what the actual was. And on gas, I saved $91. On trash, I didn't save anything. And on our home improvement loan, I actually needed to take $50 more out that I didn't plan for. And so for our credit card, uh, I budgeted 200 and the actual payment that was due was 200 and so the difference for that was zero so our total due this paycheck was 658 dollars our actual income was 2288 which left us a difference of 1630. so below i listed some non-budgeted line items or things that we have to pay all the time <clears throat> excuse me so um here groceries I budgeted $125 and it could be more or less if we eat out more it's going to be more if we eat at home mostly it's probably going to be less so that's variable every week um, depending on what we have going on for gas and by this gas I mean car fuel um, it usually takes about $27 to fill up my car and it takes about $45 to fill up his truck 
And so here, um, our third line item that I didn't actually put in our regular budget is an extra credit card payment, which I made. I made $1,000 on our credit card debt. Here, some dog food, $14. And the groomers, we had all their nails clipped and we have three pugs and they're very temperamental little dogs and they would rather you pull their arms off or they would rather break their own arm than let us clip their nails. So we do take them to the groomer it's $15 per dog, so that's $45. So the total extra for non-budgeted line items, so these are non-actual bills that are due, was $12.56. So <clears throat> our bills plus our non-budgeted line items came to $19.14. So our income for this week was $22.88 minus $19.14 gave us $374 for incidentals. So incidentals could include things like going to the dentist, our copay, um, extra dental work, things like that. I have a couple doctor's appointments I need copays for. I just had bronchitis. I needed some prescriptions, things like that. Um, it could be birthday gifts. It could be things that people are collecting for at work. You know, sometimes we're passing around a collection envelope for somebody um, at work who, you know, for whatever reason. Um, it could be going to the movies. It could be just going out with friends, things like that. That's what I consider, um, you know, items that would fall under this remaining amount. If we don't have any of those things going on, then sometimes what I'll do is I'll take maybe 250 of this and put this again on our credit card debt. So that will leave me with just a little bit of cash for the rest of the week, something that comes up. So anything that's actually remaining, remaining, I will roll over into week two. So that's how I'll start my bank balance. So here, um, paycheck number two for January 11th is going to be $850 because that's my husband's income minus his 401k contribution. And again, he gets paid weekly. So here, the only thing we have to pay between January 11th, let me get to the right page, between January 11th and January 17th, so the only thing that we have to pay in between this week is going to be our electric bill. And I always budget $200 for that because we have a lot a lot going on and our electric is rarely this expensive. In fact, it's never $200 to be brutally honest. Um, but we have a lot of um, kind of like yard tools and things like that. And my husband works outside a lot. He builds things and, and stuff like that in his free time. So it just depends on what's going on and, <clears throat> you know, what we have um, going on in the summer. You know, maybe we're running the air conditioning more. And that's all run by electric at our house. So um, I budget $200 in anything that you know, we don't spend on the electric bill is then just bonus money for us. So budgeted $200 out of our grand income for this month, which is $850, which leaves me $650. So the non-budgeted line items for this week include groceries. Again, I just put on $125. Gas and fuel. We usually fill up our cars once a week. So $27 for me, $45 for him. Um, doctor copay. I know that I have a doctor's appointment this week. And so my copay is $15 for my insurance. I know that he's going to give me a new asthma medication. So that prescription is to be, to be determined. And I'm also going to squeeze in here an extra credit card payment, depending on how these things fall and what we end up with will determine how much extra I pay on the credit card this week. So here I have not, um, done the entire you know, um, line item by line item as I did for last week because last week is over. Um, I'm going to save this until probably the 12th or so, about a day after um, we get paid or he gets paid, and then I'll be able to fill in that section. So as you can see, um, I do need some extra space, and I would also just just like the freedom to spread out just a little bit more and get a little bit more in depth with, with which some of these things mean. I also want to have um, an area here for due date. And right now I just can't fit it in. Um, here, this, let me show you. Um, the spread, 
actually has the dates of the week. So I've covered that up with washi tape because I it just really didn't mean anything for the way I do my layouts. Here, um, these are kind of placeholders. I'm probably going to end up removing these if I continue with this notebook, um, but I just printed these out on the computer and that way I know which payday is which. So I have every single payday marked from now until the end of the year. So 52 weeks, we have 52 pay dates. Some dates again, we both get paid. Other dates, just my husband gets paid. So I hope that gives you a pretty good overview of how I'm doing things. I am also going to be doing some videos on um, credit score how to build up your credit score and I'm also going to be doing some videos on our debt and our debt reduction and payoff so you can see actually what's going on with us um, as far as where we started where we're at now and where we need to be way down here which is a big fat zero so that is my goal for 2019 um, it's a lofty goal I don't think we're gonna realize that with both our home improvement loan and our credit card but we are going to make quite a dent if I have anything to do with it so um, that's it. Thank you so much guys for watching again. My name is Erin. I hope that you subscribe to my channel because I would love for you to follow along with me during this journey um, this year. And um, if you have any questions on anything budget related, please feel free to ask. I'm also going to be doing some everyday planning videos, some Hobonichi and art journal flip throughs and things like that. So I have lots of content to come and um, I hope that I will see you next time. Take care.